All right, Shalom. Call hello, Yimla, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bashem, Rachak Wadash. All praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, who the world inwardly calls God, whose name means He is or He exists. Bahashem means in the name, Yahweh Shai's name of the Son, who the world inwardly calls Jesus Christ, whose name means He deliverer, He salvation. Bashem Rachak Wadash means in the name, Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of truth that we've been blessed with in order to put forth the truth in all righteousness and sincerity. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone who rule up for teaching me this truth. Salutations to the hopeful elect. All right. You brothers and sisters out there laboring. Peace, love, and blessings. Shalom, Aha, Wa, Barakim. Chaya here back with another video through the spirit. And I'm going to just do this real quick. I was actually watching this video um, earlier today. I want to say this morning. I was, uh, I got on the bus to hit the plantation. And, um, you know, uh, if anybody, you know, for those of you who know me, anybody who knows me knows that I'm big on, you know, the whole mental health thing concerning Jake and things of that nature and how, you know what I'm saying? Like Jake is going through a lot of mental disparities or what have you, you know, he's a, he's a whole mental case out here and stuff like that. And the scripture said, I've uh, said that that will happen, but this, this video that I wanted to talk about in particular was produced by Dr. Tracy Marks. She is an American um, psychiatrist, and you know she makes videos on these uh, pretty much, every, you know, just every week, you know, uh, frequently, stuff like that. So I've been, you know, just watching her for the uh, last few months, and I found this one very interesting. It's it's kind of common sense, but the way she broke it down, you know what I'm saying? It just it helped me understand. You know what I'm saying? Like the uh, the uh, the importance of, you know, face to face and physical interactions, you know, with people, more importantly, in the brotherhood and in the faith. OK. More importantly, with the with the brotherhood and the faith. So I wanted to, you know, just go into this quick lesson talking about how, you know, community is uh, is, is essential, you know, and it's truth, you know, just a real brief video. And things of that nature. So I'm going to play a little bit of uh, what she has to say about, you know, the social isolation and how you know it can mess with your with your with your brain. You know it can mess with your heart. It can mess with your mind. Okay. And then I'll go into the lesson. Mark's a psychiatrist, and I make mental health education videos. It turns out our brains are wired for social interaction, and when we don't get it, the brain changes, and you lose nerve connections in certain parts of the brain. Before COVID, this issue was more noticeable in older people who lived alone, cut off from their families, and maybe unable to drive. Researchers saw that the social isolation hastened the age-related cognitive decline and was a risk for developing Alzheimer's disease. But with COVID and the ensuing lockdown, we see the evidence of these brain changes in younger people. You may experience it as brain fog. Brain fog can be a lot of things, but in general, you can think and process information slower. You can have trouble finding words. You can feel mentally tired and draggy, even though you haven't done anything that's physically tiring. Why would social isolation do this? Your brain is made up of a network of nerves that connect to one another. The tighter the connections between the nerves, the better they are able to transmit signals from one nerve to another. Inf and I want to say this too, you know, when you're not having those social interactions, those face-to-face -face engagements and things of that nature, your brain is not being active because remember the mind is a powerful, is, a, is the mind is, is a machine. It's a, it's a whole fa uh, factory warehouse up there. All right. It's, it's a bunch of different nerves and connections and things of that nature. Like, uh, look at the movie, on um, Avatar, the first one and the second one, the, the James Cameron's Avatar and stuff like that. Like how they had that, that tree that, um, they called Awa, that was their deity and things of that nature. And, um, in the movie, they was talking about how there was like, you know, um, uh, tens of billions of connections, you know what I'm saying? Throughout the, the trees and, you know, the, the, you know, the blue people, the, um, the Navi, they would take their hair, you know, that they would, they would take the, uh, the, the organ, you know what I'm saying? That was, you know, built into their head and attach it to, you know, Awa and the branches and the trees and stuff. And, you know, and, and even, and, and even animals. So it's, you know, that's just an example of how I was telling you how, um, how, you know, these movies and, you know, pretty much life is telling you that community is important. And when you, when you, when you are, you know, deprived of that, all right, when, when you're, uh, when it's taken away from you, you know, when you're isolated, okay. And things of that nature, then, then what, 
it does a, a number on your brain. It does a number on your brain functions because it's less active. Okay, so you're not able to, you know what I'm saying, like get socially compatible with people. And she goes into all of that in the video, but I just wanted to brief it up real quick. All right, so, you know, mental engagement, I mean, social engagement is very important for your mental. Inflammation loosens these connections, as does social isolation. Social isolation affects your social cognition. Social cognition is a set of skills that include being able to read someone's emotional expression, remembering and recognizing someone that whose face is familiar to you, being able to interpret someone's tone of voice, and being able to empathize with another person and appreciate that they have their own desires, goals, and intentions. Right, because, and I'm going to stop it there. You know, I'll, I'll post the, 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 um, the video, the link to the video in the comment section. So that way your brothers and sisters can watch it for yourselves. Okay, but all of these things are very important, especially, once again, especially when you're in the truth. So when you spend a lot of time by yourself, you know what I'm saying? And, and you have very little to, you know, no interaction with the outside world and things of that nature. It does, it does a number. It does a lot of damage to your cognitive abilities. All right, so you can't read social cues. Or you can't recognize certain faces and things of that nature. She talked about uh, brain fog. Okay, you 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 know have trouble kind of coming up with um or finding the next words and things of that nature. All right. So long story short, things just start to become more difficult. Now, with us in the the reason why I'm doing this video, equating it to the truth, is because you know Yahweh Shem Al Shah has put the Holy Spirit on us to be able to you know be stronger in in certain uh, in certain circumstances. Okay, because you do have brothers out on the highways and the hedges that that are you know, by themselves physically, okay, some of which, you know, like myself, some of which do have access to brothers, and some don't, okay, so instead they have to, you know, suffice with, um, maybe family members in the world that they can talk to from time to time, you know, maybe they have a woman at home, maybe they got children, maybe they have a, a, a animal, you know, maybe they chop it up with people from work or on a job and things of that nature, but, you know, the, the most important and the more important thing to have in this truth you know, uh, uh, as far as, you know, keeping our mental engagement up to par is having a brotherhood. Okay. Start a brotherhood of a brotherhood of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. Because what? Notice when, when you look at camps and things of that nature, especially with, you know what I'm saying? Like three or more brothers, you know, everybody could play off of each other's precepts through the scriptures, all right, through the spirit. Everybody could pray, uh, play off of each other's precepts. And um, brothers' minds just be flowing. All right, that's that that the spiritual, the spiritual chemistry, the spiritual stimulation is activated, you know. And it's a beautiful thing. And that's why you know when when brothers is at camp, you know what I'm saying. Somebody bring out a precept, they're like, oh, that's the spirit. I was just about to get that and things of that nature because it's 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 what our 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 uh, uh brains are functioning a lot better when we're around each other. And the scriptures go into that, you know. But I'm not gonna make this video too long. So let me go ahead and um dive in. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verse 9. It says, two are better than one. Salakia. It says, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. All right, and then the NLT, it says, two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. Okay, once again, brothers, and it's true. All right, plenty of scriptures that, that talks about that. All right, that's why, you know, uh, 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 more so in the New Testament, because that's what I've been reading out of lately. And stuff like that, you know, the Apostle Paul, he kept writing epistles to the brothers, you know, in Ephesus, in Corinth, in, in Rome, okay? Kept writing epistles to them, you know, uh, uh, letting them know that, you know, he hears about their works and, you know, he's giving them admonishment, he's giving them advice, he's telling them what, what, what he's been through and how he's in bonds and things of that nature and, you know, talk about how he's going to see them soon and he can't wait to see them, you know what I'm saying? And then he salutes each and every single last one of them out. In Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. So it says, for if they fall, so the Apostle Paul, excuse me, the Apostle Paul is sending these episodes out and visiting these churches to build these brothers up in the faith. Okay, and this that's exactly what we need to be doing. And, and if you if you by yourself and you can't, you know, actively physically get around brothers, then you know, do videos or you know, phone calls and video sessions or or, or what have you. Or like I said, if you just don't have access to brothers in general, like period. You know what I'm saying? Like, try to make that suffice with, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, 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 certain family members that you can engage with. Okay. Verse 10. It said, but 
but I highly recommend if you can help it, get around brothers. All right. Verse 10, it says, for if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Okay. So, and it's true for, for brother, you know, uh, uh, errs in the faith, if he go off, if he gets weak and things of that nature. Okay. The scriptures say, woe to him who is alone, man. And, and, you know, being alone, I right, willingly being alone is, is, you know, for, for certain individuals, it goes back to a, a certain pride demon. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to take rebuke. You know what I'm saying? You maybe, maybe you, uh, you, you despise brothers. Maybe you despise the faith in general. All right. And then, then, and then that would mean all your work is in vain. All your labor is in vain and things of that nature. Okay. If you're one of those individuals that just like, nah, I don't fuck with brothers. Yada, yada, yada. I want to just do my own thing. And because you got to remember the Lord sees all of these things. The Lord sees our vain thoughts. So if you're thinking like that, best believe the Lord is going to check you. All right. It says, but woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Okay. So when you fall, when you err in the faith and, and you know what I'm saying? Um, you're continuously erring in the faith and you, uh, and, and what you become weaker and weaker and weaker because you don't have anybody to give you that admonishment. All right. You don't have anybody to check you. All right. Now, you do have brothers with certain spirits where the Lord will allow them to, you know, check themselves and go back in the scriptures and build their confidence up and things of that nature. You do have certain you have you do have certain exceptions. OK, but ultimately, if you're a brother, you know, weak in the faith, if you're a brother who um who uh, who uh, feels like he needs more, you know, um, uh, 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 admonishment, more discipline or what have you, you know what I'm saying? Get around older brothers who who knows. Who knows what they're doing? Who could, you know, advise you on what or how you should operate in the truth? OK, model yourself after another brother. OK, get a community. Verse 11, it says again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? All right. Yeah. And in, 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 in a physical sense, if two people, you know, lie together. OK, then do what? You got this, this, um, this, uh, this chemical in our bodies called oxytoc uh, oxytocin all right they call it the love drug all right it emanates off of you know uh, uh off of each other like if you lie in the bed if you if you lie in the bed with your woman or whatever the case so even if you you know what i'm saying like you you you, you in bed with your animals not in that sense but you know what i mean and stuff like that like you if you if you're in bed with your woman and things of that nature you know anything anybody or anything with body heat you know what i'm saying oxytocin is released and now oxytocin can help you, you know, become more relaxed. It helps you sleep better and things of that nature. OK, and, it, and it, 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 it helps improve that bond that you have with that person that you're, you know, physically lying in heat with. OK, so how much more in a spiritual sense in the truth when you got brothers around? Then once again, you play off of each other's, you know, precepts. OK. It says, again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? All right. And as a matter of fact, let me pull this real quick, too. All right. Let me pull this real quick. Two, three, gathered. All right. Because the Lord loves, the Lord loves unity. All right. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 20. All right. Yahweh Shai speaking. It says, where two or three are gathered together in my name. There am I in the midst of them. Okay. Once again, you do have certain brothers who are by themselves. This does not mean that the Lord is not dealing with them. Okay. The Lord is just giving you a, 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 um, a outline, if you will, of how, you know what I'm saying? You, you should be conducting, uh, conducting yourself in the truth. Okay. But if you're a brother out there by yourself, because maybe you are under certain circumstances to where you're either way too far away from brothers. Okay. Or you're just in one of those remote locations to where, um, well, that, that would be the same thing as being too far away from brothers. But, you know, maybe your job that you have to work at at this point in time and stuff like that can cause you not to be around brothers as frequently. All right. And there's, you know, you got brothers with different situations. All right. But Yahweh Shah is giving you the outline. Okay. When two or three are gathered together on my name, he's in the midst. Okay. And if you sincerely believe in Yahweh Hashem Yahusha, even by yourself, the Lord is dealing with you as well, man. All right, we just you just have to you know uh, check yourself a lot more, a lot better, because you're not going to have anybody to help you do that. All right, so it's important to you know just continually e e examine yourself. All right, I'll also get this in the Book of Psalms. 
the Holyum, chapter 133, it's lucky, 133, and 1, it says, a song of degrees of David, behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity, all right, for brothers to be a unit, all right, because what, Yahweh Shem Shah loves when brothers can, you know, get up and fellowship, okay, and, and you know, uh, encourage and exhort one another to, you know, righteousness and good works, okay, when brothers, you know, uh, participate in lessons together, all right, when brothers collab, you know, that's where you get the, uh, the, the, the mega camps from, and so on and so forth, like, you know, brothers in New York that go to, that go to Dallas and vice versa, brothers traveling to see each other in Florida or what have you, okay, the Lord loves that, seeing brothers, you know, dwell together in unity, all right, but if you're one of those carnal ass dudes that just like, nah, I just want to be by myself and so on and so forth, then look, man, you got to remember the Lord, the Lord sees everything, man, all right, the Lord knows, the Lord knows your, your minds, all right, the Lord knows our minds, man, all right, and you're going, you're going to get sifted out if you're trying to act like that, all right, maybe you got some type of, you know, a, uh, um, uh, a static with a brother and things of that nature. You just like, nah, fuck him, yada, yada, yada. You, you know, you throwing curses up and all this other stupid shit. Okay. The Lord is not happy with those actions. All right. Because once again, we need each other. All right. At the end of the day, verse 12, Ecclesiastes 4 and 12, it says, and if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. And then uh, verse 12, in the NLT, it says a person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. Okay, because what? Once again, it's a unit. It's a unit. All right. If one brother get punched out, you know what I'm saying? The two other brothers is, is going to fight. I uh, could could fight in his in his place as well. All right. You know, not to, you know, try to make it a, a, a carnal matter and things of that nature. But even Jake in the world understands that. You know, they understand community and unity. That was, it's all the same shit. All right. Even Jake in the world understands community, but they do it on the left hand side. All right. Like, like how you got these, uh you know, these gangs and stuff like that. And they model themselves, you know, after, um you know, uh, defective individuals, man. All right. But that was the point on that. Let me get this. This word embrace, I'll get the etymology. All right, embrace etymology. It says, it's a verb, mid 14th century. It says, clasp in the arms. Embrasier. This says, clasp in the arms, enclose, covet, handle, cope with. Okay? It says, um, in or n or m. And then brace, bras, the arms. Yeah, like brazos, the Spanish word brazos, which means um arms. Yeah, and that's the point, okay? And, um, you know, one thing that came to mind when I was uh, reading that definition is, uh, well, when I thought of the word embrace in general is when brothers salute each other. All right, you know, yahab, bashim, yahab, shah, And then, you know what I'm saying? You take, you know, you take a brother by the forearms and, what, you embrace him. You give him a hug, Okay. And things of that nature, you know, and, or like when you hug your father or your mother or, you, you know, a family member, stuff like that. What you embrace them, you give them that that hug. OK, because that embracing is a sign of comfort and trust. All right. Same thing with a kiss. Like when you kiss somebody, that means you're showing favor towards them. OK. So that was the point on that. Let me also get this. Damn. What else? Uh, what else did I have in stock? Let me see. Oh, yep, that's right, Khan. That's the spirit. Okay. It's good to have a brotherhood. You know what I'm saying? As 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 as, as long as the Lord is um is, is dealing with you, man. You know? Because remember, you got you got individuals, you know what I'm saying, in the in the in the world that have communities. All right, do you got brothers in the truth that have communities, man? All right. But let me get this in the book of Proverbs, chapter 27. Jumping down to verse 17. It says, Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. All right, and that's plain and straight to the point. All right, iron sharpens iron, man. Okay, so you know, a brother, once again, if a brother fall, you help him back up. If he slip, you give him admonishment. 
Okay? And that's the things that we're supposed to do for each other. Even brothers online. Even brothers that go back and forth online and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing wrong with telling a brother respectfully that he went off on something. You know what I'm saying? Or sending a brother... You know what I'm saying? Like, a, a, hey, that's a beautiful video. I, you know, exhorting him, you know, uplifting him and stuff like that. Sharing the brother's videos or, you know, community posts or whatever the case is. All right. You, we got to we got to continue to sharpen each other, man. All right. Because what in this world today, I also want to say this concerning the whole ISO of uh, social isolation um, uh, circumstances. OK, because you got Esau Edom that that he's he, he divides the people, man. And what he has pushed in America Okay, is division and in, in being independent. All right, individuality. All right, strict individuality at that and isolation. All right, so you got both men and women. You know what I'm saying? Isolating themselves from the world, and you got people growing up with these, you know, these these problems. They don't know how to read social cues, and you know what I'm saying? They become, you know, a, a, a narcissist, and and they become very, you know, exceeding proud. Okay, they 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 develop all of this, you know, mental. These are these they have all of these mental flaws, so to speak. All right. They don't really know how to interact with people because they're not around people like that. All right. And then social media is not making it any better. All right. The pandemic didn't make it any better. They made it a whole hell of a lot worse. OK. So it says iron sharpen of iron. So a man sharpen of the countenance of his friend. And I um because something just came to my head reading that like if you um. If, if you're a brother that work out, you like going to the gym, doesn't it feel better to have somebody to go with you? You know what I'm saying? And then both of y'all just, you know, you, you, you crushing you, you kill workouts. You know what I'm saying? That brother do his sets and reps and, and then you do your sets and reps. You know what I'm saying? Y'all build each other up. Okay. And I, I, I and, and I haven't looked at it, but I'm, I'm confident that there's some, some science out there that says that if you go to the gym, you know, with two or more people, you know, both of, you know, all of you guys are going to grow together, scientifically speaking. It, like, I, I'm, I'm convinced that there's some study out there like that, but I haven't seen it. But it would make sense. It would make sense. OK, because as humans, as you know, Dr. Tracy Marks said in the video, we're sub, like we're built for for um, interactions. Loosely paraphrasing what she said. OK, so I wanted to embrace. Uh, let me get this in the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 10. OK. We like we are designed to interact with each other. We are designed to have community. All right. That's why we're supposed to have, you know, families. This is why we're supposed to have a wife or wives. And we're supposed to be creative families. We're supposed to have that community setting. So when we don't have that, we become more irritable. It shortens our lifespans. OK, because what, you know, more stress is created. All right. And stress can kill, especially if it's chronic, chronic stress kills. All right. Romans 12 and 10, it says, be kindly affectioned one toward Salaki. It says, be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. All right. So there you go. All right. Be kindly affectioned one to another. Let me get that word affection real quick. Well, let me get let me get brotherly love. All right. So this is the Greek word Philadelphia. <laughs> This says love of brothers and sisters, brotherly love. It says in the New Testament, the love which Christians cherish for each other as brethren. OK, because in the truth, do we not call each other bro uh, brothers? All right. We're we the sons of God. We're the sons. We, the, we you know, we the, uh, the sons of Yasharala. All right. Baniam Yasharala. OK. And so we have to conduct ourselves accordingly. All right. And there is much, I'll say this too, there is much discord in the brethren, man. And this is why the Lord, as always, is, is sifting individuals out. That's not right in the spirit, man. Okay? Because when you when you got static with a brother, when you mess up with a brother, or brother mess up with you, vice versa, whatever the case is, you know, there, there's always room for, you know, reconciliation. All right? There could always be room for reconciliation, okay? But some, but especially in the times we live in, because it's, it's very hard to trust individuals, and things of that nature. Sometimes you could just, you know, you could be forgiven without being associated with, man. All right. So a brother can forgive you, but that don't mean a brother has to associate themselves with you. All right. But the scriptures say, be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's why I said I was going to look at the word affection too. All right. Philostorgos. 
All right, Philostorgos, this is kindly affection. It says the mutual love of parents and children and wives and husbands, okay? Community, loving affection, prone to love, loving tenderly. And what is love? Okay, love is the keeping of, of, of the, uh, the, the uh, commandments of the Most High. All right, that's love. That's the real love. All right, so what? Love is an action. It's an emotion, but it's emotion. It's an emotion geared around a certain action. Okay. It says chiefly of the reciprocal tenderness of parents and children. All right, so there you go. All right, now spiritual parents. Okay, is is what the the elders and the apostles, man. All right. So that was the point on that. Let me get this one last scripture and then I'll close out. Like I said, I wasn't trying to make this too long, but I just thought it was a very interesting video. Like I said, I'll post it in the comment section. This is the book of Galatians chapter six, verse two. It says, bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Hamashiach. Okay, so there you go. Bear ye one another's burdens. So, you know, if a brother is going through something and stuff like that, okay, he, he may come to you and confide in you. And things of that nature, all right. He and he asks for help. You know, your our obligation is to help that brother in any type of way we can. All right, with the scriptures, you know, if it's a financial situation and stuff like that, you know, tell him to pray. You know what I'm saying? Uh, give him, give him some advice, help him out, give him some scripture. Okay, you're supposed to what comfort him. We're supposed to be be comforting each other all the time. All right. We're supposed to be comforting each other all the time, man. All right. And, and comforting also can come through admonishment, man. And admonishment could, could sometimes be extremely uncomfortable. Rebukes are very uncomfortable. But what? It's still love. Okay. Read Hebrews, the uh, the, uh, the the 12th chapter, man. All right. Where, where the scriptures talk about, you know, um, despise not the chastening of the Lord. Need to be weary of his correction. All right. So if a brother check you, if a brother admonishes you, then that's good. Then that means he loves you. That means he's looking out for you and, and trying to save your life. So it'd be in your best interest to listen. Okay. But that was the point on that. Like I said, it was it, it was a it was a beautiful video when I watched it this morning and I thought about it. And I was just like, damn, I want to do a lesson on that. You know, this is so heavy. You know, the, the importance of our, our community. All right. Love's willingness is edifying. Shalom.